Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Early this morning, truckers from around the Midwest hit the highway to raise money for cancer research. They were taking part in the second annual Tony's Convoy for Hope. Big rigs rolled into Lloydminster's exhibition grounds in Convoy, having made the trek from Vermilion earlier in the morning. The event was the brainchild of Tom Jack, whose brother-in-law Tony died of cancer last May, spurring Tom into action. I got mad. My wife said, uh, cancer doesn't care if you're mad, it only cares, uh, it only worries when you fight back. And I said, we gotta do something. Last year, 35 trucks took part and they raised nearly $18,000. This year, they hope to raise 20 grand thanks to more trucks and vehicles. The event is gaining momentum. You can feel the energy off of everyone. It's also bringing drivers together for a spirited, fun gathering. <laughs> But its organizer is most proud of the meaningful cash they're raising. We do this with zero expenses. If we get one dollar, Cross Cancer gets that whole dollar. Its support the Alberta Cancer Foundation is grateful for. Everyone has their story and although this is in memory of Tony, there are currently 46,620 Albertans living with cancer in Alberta right now. And its support from his fellow truckers, it's clearly moving for trucker Tom. I'm, I'm only 5'7", but today I feel 10 feet tall, man. Meanwhile, local car fanatics had a chance to show off their prized possessions today at the specialty show and shine. The event featured nearly 75 cars on display, a turnout that was a relief for organizers who worried unpredictable weather might put the brakes on the event. At one o'clock this morning when I was here checking on the security of the place, I thought, oh dear, oh dear, it is not going to go. It's gone. We are terrifically happy. Car fans of all ages got to admire classic vehicles and proud owners had the chance to show off the product of their labors of uh, love. About 11 to 1200 hours of work in it, uh, excluding uh, research and uh, parts acquisition. The last time the Lloydminster twins felt the bitter taste of defeat was back in the 09 semifinal against Meadow Lake. And it would be a 36 game winning streak since if it hadn't been for a 2-2 tie earlier this season with Standard Hill. We stranded probably 20-some base runners that game. We just didn't get the timely hits when we when we needed, and that's that's going to happen if you if you're not knocking the driving your runs in and giving teams a chance to hang around. The Twins didn't dwell on the broken streak, but rather focused on another. The winning formula to the 36-game unbeaten streak it just comes with consistency. You know, we've got a core group of guys that have been here for a long time. We've put in our time and. We know what we need to do day in, day out to uh, come to the ballpark prepared and ultimately give us the streak that we're on. We've had a few games where we've had to come from behind or a couple walk-off games in the last inning, so it's quite a streak we're racking up, so we're pretty pretty proud of it because I don't think it can probably won't be matched again. The Twinkies know this can't go on forever, but they're going to ride the unbeaten train for as long as they can. Honestly, no. You don't even think about that. You, you think about all the years we've had together, all the fun, all the victories, some hard losses, and you know it's kind of well-deserved to a lot of these guys. A two-year unbeaten streak and being crowned back-to-back -back NSRBL champions carries a target. The Twins open up the postseason and continue their quest for a three-peat Monday evening against the Lloyd Midgets. they got a good, good young team and they're going to battle. They're not going to roll over for us by any means, just like no one will, but... We can get the timely hits and then, then we should be all right because I think our, our pitching is usually always there and the defense has been good. So. The horn blew on the second half of the CPCA Sega Pro Tour last night in Meadow Lake. Some of the young guns who down the back stretch of the Calgary Stampede turned it up. That carried over into day one up in Meadow. This year's Rangeland Derby Rookie Driver Award runner-up Jamie Labacane tore around the half-mile track in Heat 7, penalty-free with a time of 105.96. Right behind him in second was Devin Mitzwing, followed by 007 Roger Moore in third. The standings leader Gary Gorst finished fourth, while Shane Nolan rounded out the top five at 107.51. Day two of racing gets going tonight at 7 sharp.